Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to tension a timing chain on a Bike Friday tandem. Uh, let's assume you're starting with a tandem that's shifting and braking, it's, it's working well, it's tuned up, and we want to adjust just the tension of the chain. And so this design allows us to tension the chain without throwing off the tension on the shift and the brake cable. So what to look for is a set of bolts that's behind a section of housing, not behind this bolt over here is behind a section of exposed wires. So if we were to loosen this bolt, we'd throw off our shifting and braking performance. So I'm going to start by loosening these bolts that are behind the housing section. There have been a variety of different frame changes over the years, so it's possible yours would be here. But what you're looking for is the bolts behind the housing section on the bottom two of the mid-tubes. I'm going to loosen both of those bolts. And we'll see that we've got a nice floppy floppy timing chain here. And the basic trick now is to just put my weight down on the bottom tube uh, until that chain tensions. Now oftentimes that won't quite be enough. I've tensioned it somewhat, but I'd like it to be a little bit tighter. And no matter how much weight I put on there, I can't quite get it to go far enough. So in that case, I will tighten that at least one of those bolts back down to prevent it from slipping. And then I'll move up to the top tube. This three bolts on an oversleeve here. I'll loosen two or three of those until I feel the tubes relieve some stress. I'm lifting up a little bit too to help it relieve some stress. And once I feel that move a little bit, that stress is out of the frame, tighten those all three bolts back down and I'm ready to repeat the previous step with a loose bolt down here. I'm going to put weight on the bottom mid tube again. Yeah, this time I've got a nice tight chain. It's got maybe about an inch of deflection in the middle, so that feels nice and tight. And while I'm putting some weight on it, you know, it'd be nice to have a helper here, but put some weight downward and then tighten this both bolts all the way down. Hey, I'm help. here to help. Okay, great. Here, <laughs> use that wrench. I'll just keep my foot here. How tight should I get it, Michael? It depends on what wrench you're using, but uh, if you're using a regular Bondus L wrench, you just want it to be kind of leaving a nice indentation in your hand. Uh, don't want to force it. You can strip those bolts, um, but that's you're going to notice that it's now more resistance uh, when you've got it at the right place. So be distinctly like, oh, there's more resistance happening now on the tool. So pay attention to pay attention to that. <laughs> Not sure about you. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's the basics, that's how it should work. Thanks. And just for some clarifying points, mm -hmm. the tubes on the bottom and the top, here and there, should be fully butted into place, correct? Right, so that's why I said originally if we're starting off with a bike that's working well, this will mm -hmm. do it. But if you're starting off with a bike that uh, the shifting or the braking is out of whack, um, usually the situation is that the other end, the end we did not adjust, is not fully inserted into that socket. So if I'm looking at a run of exposed cable that bridges over where this tube inserts into that tube, I always want to make sure that this uh, mid tube is inserted as far as possible into the socket of the rear section of the bike. Here are the brazons and you can see the exposed cable bridges over between the mid tube and the socket of the rear section of the bike. That, sh that we don't ever want to move when we're tensioning the chain. On the front, in comparison, this gap is being bridged by housing, That's right. not exposed cable. And that allows us to change how far this tube is inserted, which will affect the chain tension without affecting the shifting and braking performance. And on the top tube, that is reversed. So up here, this should be butted fully into place. Correct. On this particular bike, uh, the, the top tube would go into the front section, and our adjustment was done underneath this three-bolted oversleeve at the back. Some bikes have this at the front, so you do want to pay attention. The main thing that's important is where those housing sections are. And we have some bikes that would have a, a housing section that runs along the top. And so in that case, you do the same thing. Pay attention to where you have bolts behind a housing section instead of exposed wire. So does one bolt always indicate the section that is no. fixed there, into place? There have been many varieties of 
how many volts and where the volts are located. Hmm. But there has always been this, the, the strategy of housing allowing you to adjust the timing chain versus exposed wire. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Mm -hmm.